In a previous video, we talked about the idea of using masking to make edits and changes to a graphic whereby you're not actually doing anything disruptive to the graphic. However, there may come a time as far as resizing or having to change elements on the actual graphic that you'll need to make some tweaks here. And that's where the image dropdown menu comes into. Also in previous videos, if I come up to the image dropdown menu, we kind of talked a little bit about the modes and the color management, etc. However, a couple of things we really didn't talk about was as far as in terms of the transformation, the canvas size, but also the scaling of the image as well. So I'd like to kind of just briefly go over each of those individual elements because they can add a little bit as far as the graphic is concerned. First off, let's start with transforming. It's exactly like it sounds like. You can actually take the image and rotate or flip the graphic accordingly. So for example here, if I flip horizontally, you now see it did just that. It rotated on an axis for me. A word of caution on this, this works fantastically as far as just general graphics, for instance, like the nature here, the nature element. However, one of the drawbacks can be is that, especially if you have text that is embedded into the graphic, it's difficult to pull this off just because of the fact that the text is going to look backwards. So just be aware of those types of things. Also, uh, this can run into issues with reflections as well, and such as glass, mirrors, etc. Now, the next item too though, and you can do other things if you like, you can do, as you saw, you can, you know, rotate uh, counterclockwise if you need to, or if you want to then come back, you can rotate clockwise, etc. The image layer, or the image dropdown also ties into the crop tool, which allows you to remove edges and areas here as far as the layer is concerned. Now, a couple of things with the tool options here. Uh, you can choose to only crop the current layer. However, if you leave this deselected, all subsequent layers will also be affected. So for instance here, I'm maybe looking at this and saying, you know what, that's a lot of dark from those, that tree there. I'm gonna go ahead and crop that out there. You can see that it gets a little bit darker on the left-hand side where the crop uh, where it is not included in the crop versus the cropped area. Now normally we can just hit enter or return and it'll crop the area for us. I do want to just show you though, let me control Z and let's do that crop again. If you are interested, there is another means of creating a crop. So let me actually go ahead here, I'll pull back a little bit. But again, under image, there is a crop to content. So now I can use the crop here. Now again, I'm utilizing this crop tool here to make edits. And the reason being is you'll see here, there may be times you actually just wanna get rid of a piece of an image. This is a little bit different from masking because what we're doing is yes, you are making what we call a destructive change to the graphic. Not like it's this terrible thing, but for instance here, you can see this outer portion is now darkened. And if I hit enter or return, you can see that it's now removed that element as far as the overall canvas of the graphic. Now, another thing that you may wanna do is, okay, I've made this edit, kind of pulled it in a little tighter, but I wish that the canvas kind of extended a little bit further here on the right-hand side. Once again, that comes into the layer here and that's where canvas size comes into play here. So now what I can do is I can change the canvas size here 
as far as the overall canvas. So you can see here it says centered as far as the graphic goes, but maybe I want to change the width to say 1600. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to resize it. And you see now that transparency popping up there? So again, I've changed the canvas size, but I haven't changed this image size. So this is a way now, for instance, if I wanted to, I could add, oh, I don't know, I could add like a selection here and we could come in, I could change the color to say, you know, a nice dark green here and I could kind of have a banner fill uh, going on here as far as the overall graphic is concerned. And there we go. Had to make a brand new layer there. But you see now that I'm not losing a lot of that edge there. And I'm going to go ahead here now. And now I've been able to kind of had a better effect here where I'm not losing a lot of the photography because I only have a certain amount of space I was able to extend out that edge so the last item to take you through as far as these elements are concerned is under image and the one thing to talk about is scaling the image Scaling the image actually affects the entirety of the overall graphic here. So right now I have a width of 1600 and a height of 990. Notice here next to it, the little chain link that is actually linked there. And let's say I do, oh, oops, let's say I do 1200. And that's going to change it to 743. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to scale it. So that's the difference there. So what it did was it took the entirety of the graphic and scaled the graphic versus in the previous example where I took the canvas of the image and I extended it out to give me a little bit more working space. So these are two options that you can work between as far as whenever you are creating graphics and trying to add on additional graphical elements to your projects.